joined today by Shankar Rumagavello, uh, CDIO at Verizon Group. Shankar, welcome. And uh, we heard you speak earlier this morning about what you've achieved and what still remains to be achieved in terms of deploying analytics AI through your organization. Can you just give us a brief summary of, of where you are at on that journey? First of thanks, thanks Mark, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, you know, so four years back, we embarked on this journey. And uh, um, this journey was all about how do we really move from more of a, a diagnostic analytics practice that we had uh, to one of predictive and prescriptive, and we want to be able to do that at scale. So what I mean by that is like, we were very good at looking back in the rear view mirror, explaining what happened and why it happened, but how do we really predict the future outcomes and, and provide guidance on what to do next? So I'm pleased to say over the four years, we've made some very good progress. We now have moved, I would say, from an artisanal analytics practice to an industrial AI. And that's what I talked about in terms of the blueprint to really stand up an AI factory. So it starts with having those data pipelines, identifying all the data sources that we have as uh, CSPs, all the assets. And that's across all of the business. So network operations. Absolutely. Uh, retail channels, everything. Every, so that is that you hit on the, one of the most important points is we wanted to make sure, because prior to this effort, we were data driven, but it was all in respective silos. The network team had visibility to only the network data. Nobody else was able to see that. Retail team had visibility yeah. to the footfall and what's going on in the stores. Nobody else got to see that. Device technology team had access to the device data. But the moment we put, set this organization and said, no, let's treat data as an enterprise asset. Let's bring all of these things together. It just unleashed a whole new set of... And I guess that's easier said than done because Verizon is a huge organization. Absolutely. And so how do you organizationally, structurally, culturally bring those different functions together? Yeah. It, this is a, 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 a vision that has to be set at the top. And this is precisely what we did when we embarked on this to say, as a company, we have all these great assets, but data is only powerful in the presence of more data. So right from the top, this was a priority for us to say, we're now going to set up a practice around AI and data, so that way we benefit the entire company and not just, because we truly believe the only way you can scale excellence yeah. is really having the entire company move one foot yes. forward, not just in pockets you move thousand feet forward. Right? Uh, and is that, um, is that a process centralization or decentralization or a bit of both? It's a bit of both. So, so centralization where we said there are certain things that we want to truly have as a center of excellence. For example, we ingest data from about 900 sources. We have built around 20,000 like data pipelines coming in. We have decided on a directional framework for the platform where we are going to house this data. There is a model development lifecycle that we have built. So standardization is important. So we do have a center of excellence with data scientists, data engineers, machine learning engineers, and data governance folks. In addition to that, we also have pods that are closer to the business because they are the ones closest to what the business wants. In our view, Mark, what we truly believe is there is business domain knowledge that you need. You need technology skills. You need data science skills. For us to be successful in this, we need that trifecta to work. And have you had to invest in bringing more people in reorganization? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is where, when we made the decision to stand up this organization, in fact, our chief data and analytics officer, we had to hire from the outside to truly build this out as a practice. So, and this is someone who's tested. So Linda Avery is our yes. chief data and analytics officer. Yeah. And she has done this at scale yeah. in financial services forms before coming to Verizon. So we are now able to build on that, that expertise to say now, how do we truly build this up and also have these spokes in the respective business units to make sure that we're not moving too far away from what the business priorities are and just doing data science for data science sake. Uh, and I guess what's interesting is that all the time that the, that data capability resides within a vertical, yeah. it's part of the budgeting business ROI process. But I guess when you create an enterprise wide function, 
maybe you don't actually know what the benefits are going to be two, three years down the line. So I say it has to come from the top because it needs, it needs executive high-level sponsorship. Absolutely, right? So, so if you think about what ultimately we stand to benefit from AI, so, so I'm sure you've heard, like, you know, there is, there is these you know, things that we know, known knowns, yeah. things that we know we don't know, and things that we don't know we don't know. The beauty of AI is in the latter two. That is what it helps us really get much faster in identifying those things that we know we don't know. More importantly, identifying or discovering those unknown unknowns as well. Yeah. So those unknown unknowns, this is where you need to really pay attention to the operating model as well because you don't have a business case per se for this upfront because as you are putting this data, having this data fabric and stitching this across the domains, you're going to come up with these insights. Now, then you go back and say, you know what, what does this insight work? Can we prioritize that and act on it now so we can monetize on that? So it's more uh, like a, a, a reverse business case problem, yes. if you will, rather than saying starting with a problem, put together a business case and build a solution. Here you now have an insight. You're coming the other way to say, okay, what benefit can we get by deploying this insight? Uh, uh, and what's the relationship between a strategy around automation yeah. and a strategy around AI analytics. Is it, is it one and the same? See, here's, the, here's how we look at it. If you look at, there is a, absolutely a role for automation. Even under the umbrella of AI, robotic process automation is yeah. one of the disciplines of AI. So because it's a whole spectrum, all the way from robotic process automation to machine learning, deep learning, cognitive AI, like computer vision, natural language processing, all of these fall under the umbrella of AI. So yes, you can go do robotic process automation. That is clearly a place for that. But more advanced that you get yeah. in dealing with non-numeric data sets yeah. and things yeah. like that, yeah. you have to really progress from a skill set. So if the journey is from one to 10, yes. and you want to get to 10, where, where are you today? I would say we are probably at six. That's really good. Probably it's but, and then looking across the different functions and divisions, are some, is there more progress in some areas than in others? That is true. That is because you, when you look at having, having the impact of what we are doing across the entire enterprise, there are some areas where we are absolutely farther ahead. And that's just you know, because of the investments that we have made over time. Yeah. For example, if you think about our vision, because we truly believe we want to get more telemetry information from all the assets much more frequently and then be able to stitch this data across these domains. So we started off with network. So from a digital twin creation standpoint, yeah. we are farther ahead when it comes to our digital twin. Every single one of those elements that we have in our network, the 143,000 towers or cell sites that we have, whether it be macro cells, small cells, in-building, venues, all the way deeper into our network, right? How many sectors, yeah, how yeah. many carriers, cell site route. We have those twins that we've already created, along with the 155 million user endpoints that connect to this network. So I would say we are much farther ahead on that. Now we are able to get all those insights down at each element level. Yeah. Now our vision is how do we build the same capabilities across our other assets, whether it be distribution, our customers, employees as well. So that's the whole idea. So, so network is where you looked first. Where would you say there's most benefit to be gained in, in future? I think across the board, like, you know, right. across the network, clearly like, where we see opportunities is around operational efficiencies across the network, CapEx and yeah, OpEx. Yeah. Uh, and a big opportunity for customer experience differentiation. Yes. Because one of the things we truly believe, Mark, is we're not selling technology. No. We sell experiences. So the key is how do you really individualize those experiences? And that is what we are super psyched about in terms of the art of the possible. And what about new revenues? I mean, presumably, particularly I guess in the B2B side, it can yes. be part of the story. Absolutely. B2B side, like, you know, clearly now when we think about having a, with these capabilities now, we're looking at what are the monetization opportunities for us by creating a B2B marketplace as yeah. well on top of this. So what insights can we expose to bring partners in, onboard partners, and have them integrate with these services that we are going to offer? So now we co-create and come up with a service that is tailored to meet the customer's needs. So there are opportunities, and this would be one of those categories where we're going to discover things as we go in terms of 
If we have this capability, let's bring in a partner who complements this with something else. Now you show one plus one is greater than two. Well, we've been talking about the potential of data and AI for several years, so it's great to see that it's actually it happening. Is. So uh... I will tell you, I'll be the one to say, you know, yes, several years back, it was more PowerPoint slides, etc. Yeah. But now we are truly at a point where AI is making an impact now, yeah. and it is here. No more one of these emerging technologies that can deliver value in the future. Fantastic. Well, Shankar, thank you so much for your time. Really thank enjoyed you, talking to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.